All right, my name is Ted Moloff. I'm Andrew Moloff's dad, and Andrew has asked me to talk about the disaster in the Japanese uh, earthquake and what happened to the nuclear power plants. First thing I want to do is identify myself. I had worked at Southern California Edison, who has San Onofre 1 and 2 nuclear reactors. I was not involved directly with the nuclear reactors, but in San Onofre Unit 2, I did do the uh, seismic qualification and specification for the insulators in their switchyard. At Duke Power, I worked there, oh, about 11 years and directly with nuclear reactor. I supervised the equipment qualification group to seismically and environmentally qualify uh, the safety-related equipment that goes into a nuclear plant. And what that means is there's certain equipment that needs to shut down the reactor in case of an accident. Uh, there are two types of accidents that we had, which was a main steam line break accident and a loca, which is loss of coolant accident that happened in Japan. Such equipment is qualified to its end of life for 40 years to the environment, to the accident environment that it serves in. Uh, let's talk a little bit about a nuclear reactor. Nuclear reactor core consists of uranium fuel rods and graphite rods. The uranium fuel rods is what causes the reactor to heat up. The graphite rods is what captures neutrons and controls the amount of radioactivity uh, within the core. Now, what happened in Japan was this. The Japanese the Japanese uh, reactor was operating just fine when the earthquake hit. It, uh, the reactor core, the graphite rods went into the reactor core to shut down the, uh, the chain reaction and that, uh, that worked fine. And uh, what, what else happened was that the seismic uh, earthquake, the earthquake itself, caused power not to come in into the uh, into the uh, nuclear station and the main cooling pumps that circulate water in the reactor core were shut down now the backup diesel generators turned on that happened fine but then the tsunami knocked out the diesel generators so now there's no cooling water at all and no power to operate the cooling water pumps uh, they do have backup batteries uh, that mm, work with the safety related equipment. They, after a while, the batteries, like in a car, if you don't keep them charged, there's nothing to charge them, there's no power to charge them, so they failed also. So we had two systems fail. Another system that takes the steam and cools the steam that is generated by the boiling water that also failed, so now we had three failures going on, which was beyond my wildest dreams that anything like that would ever happen. So what we have now is a reactor core that's very, very hot that can't be cooled. So what the Japanese did, they poured seawater uh, over the reactor core to try to cool it down. And uh, when they do that, well, uh, you can't use any of the equipment around the reactor core anymore. The reactor core is in a containment building, and the containment building has a lot of equipment. When you pour seawater in there, you destroy all the equipment. So that reactor uh, is no longer usable. Something else happened too, and at this point, I don't know whether it's due to the seismic activity, or whether uh, the reactor core was breached due to heat, but we have uh, radioactive particles that are going into the seawater, into the ocean there, and that's serious. It will be diluted by the ocean currents, but those radioactive particles are still alive. They're still there. And if a fish ingests them, and we ingest the fish, on that, we could have radioac radioactivity within us. The likelihood of that is very, very little. Uh, 
there are several ways that radioactive particles can get into the body and that's inhalation by breathing, ingestion by eating food that is radioactive, or by absorption through the skin. And I think that Japan has a little bit of, of, of each. Now radioactivity is just like the sun or the, or the light that's coming from a light, a light bulb. That's not the problem in Japan for the people around it, but it's contamination, which is radioactive particles in unwanted places, and that's what needs to be controlled. I think in this country, what we need to do is to review the design basis earthquake, the DBE, the design basis earthquake that nuclear plants are qualified to and see what safety margins that we have. At this point, if you were here with me, I'd say, oh, have you got any questions? Well, so, how bad is it in Japan? Oh, it's bad in Japan. It really is. This is, this is a major accident. Uh, I understand what they have is increased their evacuation zones around the reactor because radioactive water is still leaking out into the ocean and also the radioactivity that is coming from the core is still present. They have to somehow encase it in concrete or something like Chernobyl to stop the radioactivity. Uh, it appears that perhaps the core itself has been breached in the fuel rods and the, uh, not the fuel rods, but the uh, graphite rods aren't cutting out all the radioactivity. It looks like there's still radioactivity coming either from the contamination or from the core itself. So this is a serious thing. What does a meltdown mean? Meltdown means is that the reactor core itself starts melting due to heat. And what you have is you no longer have uh, the uh, Oh, the rods, you no longer have the absorber rods, the carbon rods, in between the fuel rods. And you have meltdown and, and the fuel itself is close to another and the chain reaction keeps going on and on and on and on. Not criticality, not so critical that it cause an explosion, but that the heat and the radioactivity continues. Can it cause an explosion? No, I don't think so. Uh, yes, you can cause an explosion by boiling water and the steam pressure builds up and the steam causes the explosion. But not a nuclear explosion? Not a nuclear explosion, no. I think it's so designed that criticality uh, does not occur. I think, as I remember <laughs> things. Okay, so their best bet right now in stopping it is just encasing it in concrete. As I understand, yeah. At some point, they're just going to have to encase it in concrete and let it die there. Is that what they did at Chernobyl? That's what they did at Chernobyl. Now, yeah. you've been to the Chernobyl Museum. I have. And so that's just increased encased in concrete. concrete, and it just sits there forever. Forever, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they is there radiation leaking out of there at Chernobyl? No. Can particles get through the concrete? No, 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 no. In fact, what they're doing is now they're allowing uh, um, visitors to visit the site on that. So they, they think it's safe. I think they've cleaned up the uh, contaminated particles, the contamination, and the radiation, I think, is, is nil, nothing. What were you going to say at Hanford? No, at Hanford. Uh, you said at Hanford they're doing something. I'm sorry, not at Hanford, at Chernobyl. Oh, okay. Yeah. At Hanford, all the reactors, the largest reactor in the world is at Hanford. The largest reactor in the world is at Hanford, but it's decommissioned. Uh, some citizens are fighting to uh, make it a museum. The DOE now wants to disassemble it. I'd like to see it a museum. Biggest reactor in the world. What's your opinion on nuclear power after this accident? Okay. Nuclear power still is the cleanest power there is. My wife and I just returned from a mission in Ulaanbaatar, Siberia. They have coal power plants that generate electricity and heat, 
water. The water is piped to all the buildings. No building has its own uh, heater for water. And black smoke keeps belching out of the smokestacks. That black smoke smells bad. It is very bad for health. It coats the windows, collars on shirts. You can only wear a shirt one day there. So I think that's a bigger health hazard. Uh, a nuclear plant doesn't have anything coming out of the smokestacks. The challenge with a nuclear plant is the fuel, is the spent fuel. That has to be stored safely and it can be stored safely. So in my opinion, uh, the correct design of a nuclear power plant is the safest and least environmental impact of any other plant except for a water plant, a uh, hydro plant. Hydro plant has no impact on the environment except for fish and things, but not much for people. Okay. What do you think the U.S. ought to do with its nuclear power plants? Should they all be inspected? No, they shouldn't be inspected. I think what the U.S. needs to do is look at their design basis earthquake their DBE. The design basis earthquake is what the nuclear reactor building, the containment and all the equipment is seismically designed to withstand. I think we need to look at that and see if there's any probabilities that the design basis earthquake can be increased. If there's a significant probability of increasing then we need to look at our qualification to see if the, the structure the containment and the equipment can withstand an increase in design-based earthquake. I think we need to look at it at least. Was well, Japan's design to withstand a 9.0 earthquake? No, no. I don't know what their DBE is, but I don't think it was a 9.0. However, uh, the equipment operated correctly with the higher uh, design, with the higher earthquake level. So the problem was first the earthquake but then the secondary problem was the tsunami. The tsunami, yes, it was a tsunami. The equipment operated properly in the earthquake. If the tsunami hadn't taken out the diesel generators, everything would be fine today. Okay. No problem. Thanks. You're welcome.